Rather than lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We're going to be diving into the latest around Arsenal, some injury news on the table, and some positive news from the transfer world as well. The question in this video, do we need to get a new striker now that Gabriel Jesus is injured until January? Should Arsenal focus their efforts on getting a new striker, probably Cody Gakpo or someone like Duzan? Zan Vlahovic, now that Juventus are in a very precarious situation financially. Hit the like button for me. Let's get this video to 300 likes. And your thoughts in the comment section, I massively, massively need them. Now, let's start off with um, the injury situation on Gabriel Jesus. Yesterday, Brazil was playing in um, their last game in the, in the group stages of the World Cup in Qatar. They did lose 1-0 to Cameroon. That really didn't mean anything. They had already qualified um, as group leaders, um, you know, to the round of 16. But the problem is they did lose some players, Alex Telles and Gabriel Jesus as well. So it has been confirmed today by Charles Watts and a couple of other big journalists around this Arsenal team that uh, Gabriel Jesus will no longer be part of the uh, of the team uh, of the Brazil team in the World Cup uh, from uh, from the round of 16 quarterfinals semifinals and finals that is if they reach there and players like Alex Telles as well now the problem with Arsenal is that uh, Ben White has also left the English camp uh, for, for the World Cup gone home for personal reasons however with ben white it is not injury news he's not injured it's just a few uh, personal problems probably huge probably not huge we do not know what is happening but with gabriel Jesus, uh, the information i'm getting is gonna be three weeks he's out for three weeks and he's coming back in january so with brazil i think they do not have a big it's gonna it's not gonna have a big impact for them and their tournament i think richard has really done very very well until this point the problem is with us now he's the only striker we have he's the only player that we have playing in that role and playing that way edin Ketty is not giving us the same energy he's not giving us the same amount of um you know you know cohesion and unity up front. So Gabriel Jesus is injured now. Do we need to focus on a striker in January? Does this change our uh, our January plans? Do we start thinking about uh, a striker as a priority? In my own opinion, I'm gonna say yes. I'm, I'm gonna say uh, if Arsenal are really thinking about January as um, as a market that's really gonna help us win the title, as a market um, that's gonna help us strengthen, then now a striker is a no-brainer. I don't think um, we can have a successful January transfer window without getting in a striker. Look, Jesus has not scored in a very very long time, and I think this this has attracted a lot of criticism from uh, a few pundits that don't like Arsenal and. Um, are quite uncomfortable with the fact that Arsenal on top of the table uh, after you know a few months or a few years uh, you know under Mikel Arteta. But I think Gabriel Jesus and his impact on this Arsenal side have been absolutely, absolutely remarkable. The way he assists, the way he helps us, uh, you know, link play between midfielders and our attack, um, and the hard work he actually puts in is absolutely incredible. Now the fact that he doesn't play and start for uh, Brazil. It's a little bit baffling for me because I think it's bit better than uh, Richarlison. Even when it comes to fin uh, finishing of chances, I don't think Richarlison is a better finisher, in my opinion. I just think Tite likes Richarlison more uh, than Gabriel Jesus. And actually, there is a question why uh, Gabriel Jesus' minutes... Uh, uh, you know, for Brazil, have actually deteriorated ever since he started playing for Arsenal. He was playing more regularly as a starter uh, when he was playing at Manchester City, but coming to Arsenal, his minutes actually reduced a little bit. And maybe there is a question there, but our focus now is on Gabriel Jesus. What do we do without him? I think with Eddie, and the reason as to why Mikel Arteta uh, kept, kept Eddie is for situations like this, is for um, times like this. When you have a player that has been for, uh, within, the, with, within the system for some time, a player that really understands what, um, you know, has the same education uh, for the team or the, the same Arsenal education, the same Arsenal socialization for some time. I think that's why Mikel Arteta kept Edin Ketia. But then also last campaign, as we were coming to the end, uh, we did see Edin Ketia step up, score a few goals, uh, give a lot of, uh, you know, give a lot of trouble to a few defenders, including in big games like Manchester United and Chelsea as well. Now, do I expect Edin Ketia to step up his performances because Gabriel Jesus is injured? 
I don't think so. I don't think he's going to, you know, become that real big striker overnight. I don't think he's going to become, the, you know, that crazy striker overnight. So I don't want to say he's going to be that good for us. And he's going to be, uh, you know, uh, a revelation for us in the in the later part of the season uh, for us. I don't think it's going to be that. I don't think Arsenal need to really um, count our eggs on, uh, you know, hatching on Edin Ketia's boots. I, I don't think he's going to provide that kind of warmth. I don't think he's got, the, he's got enough credit in the bank, um, you know, to give us what Gabriel Lesius has been giving us. So for me, uh, January is going to be a very, very vital point, uh, you know, in time. We've talked about Cody Gakpo. We've talked about Mikhail Modric. And this is where I think Arsenal have to make a very rough and a very tough decision on who comes in in January and why. So, Mikhail Modric is one uh, winger that, you know, we know what exactly his kind of style of play is. He's going to hold the, uh, the length of the pitch, width of the pitch, um, as, much as, uh, as much as he can. He's so good. He's, he's a sprinter and all that. But his versatility across the forward line is actually a little bit limited. He can't play uh, just like Gabriel Jesus. And that is where Cody Gakpo comes into the picture. Now, we might not have the big... Uh, we might not have the big budget to bring in a, a, a winger, bring in a striker, and then bring in a midfielder as well. Mikel has focused himself on getting in a winger and a midfielder. I think it will be a little, it, it will feel a little bit hard done by if he doesn't got, uh, if he doesn't get two players in those two positions. So this is what I think. This is where Cody Gakpo now, guys, becomes a priority for us. This is where Cody Gakpo uh, becomes a massive, uh, you know, key player in the market. Look, we always knew with the amount of games we played prior to the World Cup, there was no resting period. We entered into the World Cup, um, again, fixed games, four games per day. And then um, after the World Cup, we are coming back into the, into the Christi Christmas period, three, uh, three, uh, two games per three days. And then after that, Games are gonna still coming, uh, you know, is, is, uh, are gonna still come uh, coming in um, thick and fast. So it's it's a no-brainer. This is where guys, I think Arsenal go. Let's go for Cody Gakpo. He can play down through the middle. He can play on the left hand side. He can also play on the right hand side because the first game he played for uh, for the Netherlands, he played on the right. He predominantly plays on the left for. Uh, PSV and Hoven, so there's no question. And then he has also played down through the middle for the Netherlands in this tournament. That shows you the versatility he has as a player. And I think many Arsenal fans uh, will actually be excited with, the, uh, with that kind of versatility, um, uh, you know, Cody Gakpo has. And personally, that's one of the reasons I, I think we need him. He might not be able to bench Martinelli and Saka right away. And uh, he might not be that, you know, everyday starter. But he's one player that can deliver whenever you need him. He can play inverted from the right, just like Saka does. He can play uh, straight, uh, uh, you know, straight as a winger on the left, just like Martinelli does. And then you, you've got to think about it. If you need that kind of guy that ha that has ha that has that um, finishing touch on his boots, maybe. In my opinion, just maybe Cody Gakpo is the right answer for us. Now, let me know in the comment section below what do you think. But I think Cody Gakpo um, right now becomes a no brainer Actually, becomes uh, you know a, a, a priority. The other name I've thought about is uh, uh, you know is, is Mediterremi at FC Porto. Arsenal have been linked with Mediterremi. I don't know if FC Porto will be looking at selling. In January, at times they do. Those Portuguese sides uh, are quite unpredictable. At times they will sell um, to you in January. At times they will they will they will hold back and say we are not selling in January. You will have to come back in the summer. Sorry, the door is closed. We are not in business in the winter. But this is what I would say here, guys. This is what I would say. I think if Mediterremi is available for sale. Go get him in January because Taremi is still young and he's got very different attributes from what Gabriel Jesus has. So his transfer would actually, wouldn't actually hurt in the short term and also in the long run as well. I think we, we do need a striker that can be a fox in the box. We do need a striker that um, can put the chances away. We're going to be we, we, we're gonna be going into a very decisive part of the season where we need to score goals 
and you need to score very important goals and you need to you score those goals on time and also in time as well that's why i think players like mediterremi um mitrovic and maybe Dusan Blahovic. I'm going to tell you why Arsenal can actually sign uh, Dusan Blahovic, and it's a very, very realistic move, right? So, Taremi is one of the players that have really impressed me uh, at the World Cup. I think Iran didn't stand a chance with USA, Wales, and the England in that um, in the group stages. But I just thought I was really impressed with that uh, Mediterremi, the way he leads that forward line, his movements, his finishing, and his belief. As a striker, because playing for a, a nation like Iran, with that, with, with all due respect, playing for a nation like Iran, you've got to feel what can we do? There, there is only so much uh, we can do against England, Wales, and USA. But you look at that goal he scored against you uh, against England. That's a beauty. That was an absolute beauty. He has all the qualities of a good striker, and for me, his form right now. Is very very admirable. But then the other striker is uh, is, is 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 Mukoko or Mukoko at uh, Borussia Dortmund. I don't know if Dortmund will be selling, but Mukoko's contract actually has one year and six months left. In the summer, he'll be left with one year. He wants to co he wants to extend his contract, and Dortmund also want to extend his contract. But you never know. Probably this could be um, a time where Arsenal walk in, talk to Mukoko, tell him. We need you, right? You're going to be a starter for now because Gabriel is injured. But then also you have more qualities than Eddie Nketiah. So you are, you are, you are, you are better, you're a better fit to, you know, to play in our system. So Mukoko is another uh, player. I will do a, a compilation of these, you know, strikers and their strengths and weaknesses. Another player is Marcus Thuram at Borussia Mönchengladbach. I think we've talked about Thuram on this channel before. And he's one of those players that are for sale cheap his contract runs down in the summer and monkey gladback don't want to lose him on a free arsenal a kind of front runners and could it could, could this be one of those opportunities that are actually manifest themselves just like that i mean I, i've not seen marcus Thuram play a lot of the time just like I, I told you in the other video but i just feel for six million euros for seven million euros there's no way you cannot do the, such a deal if you're chasing the title. Like, th th that is a deal that has written itself, do me right now, right? It's kind of a transfer, please, kind of, um, it tr it's, it's, it's one of the best bargains you're going to get in this January transfer window 2023. And, of course, the other, the other name is going to be, uh, the other name is going to be uh, Dizan Vlahovic. You have, uh, do have a problem when it comes to their finances. And if I'm Juve, I'll be looking to sell many of my players right now before um, it gets worse. So I think Arsenal can actually walk into uh, Turin and get, his, you know, get ourselves some decent names uh, out of that Juventus side. Vlahovic is one of them. But then the other guy I'm really, really interested in is Akadia Smelik. And the reason that's why I'm really uh, interested in Akadia Smelik is he's red of scoring goals actually i think he's got more goals than Vudzan blahovic this season don't have any proof of that because i've not done any research before saying that but i but whenever I look at juventus have scored he's actually been on the score sheet i don't know how he does that but if i not looking for a cheaper option probably someone who can uh, who will not take a lot of time um you know in doing the deal akadia smilk would be the other guy what do you think i mean talk to me in the comment section january is always tricky and such an injury actually puts us in not only a precarious, but in a very deadly, deadly uh, situation. It's one of those, um, you know, it's one of the situations if you pirate that you'd never want to meet on sea. We are in a very big storm, a very, very huge storm. And I think for us to survive this, we need to be strong, but then we need to be smart as well so talk to me which player do you want arsenal to sign um for in in, in the place of um uh, uh of gabriel of gabriel Jesus? it's gonna be three weeks but within those three weeks there is a lot of football for arsenal right and remember we, we have not actually counted uh the recovery process time and those uh, things like that so you might actually miss the whole of january that is why 
that is why we desperately need to find either someone or find a way. Emil Smith Rowe can play as a number t- as a false nine, but I don't want to see that. There are things I don't want to see starting 2023, and one of them is Emil Smith Rowe playing as a false nine. Probably Martinelli, though. If we played Martinelli down through the middle, would it actually make more sense? Let's have the conversation in the comment section, and I'll talk to you soon.